Hi, here we have AIM Banking Part C, the so-called neobanks, the new generation of banks. They're a subset of FinTech, which effectively offer banking services. Why say FinTech also includes uh, companies offering, say, fraud detection and things like that, so partial services. Even in uh, neobanks, there are two types of neobanks. Full stack neobanks, which actually have a license. A license is a sort of um, obviously important because you can probably get FDIC uh, um, insurance for your for your accounts and things like that. The customers can rather, and um, they have a modern full service with a platform, and they have a front, middle, and back end, and they all sometimes have a marketplace for, to merge things together. However, there are a lot which are equally promising, which are just more focused on particular technology. They partner with legacy banks, which have the license, the magic license, which is obviously going to be very difficult to get for a new bank, because the, there'll be a lot of pressure to not give licenses to lots of banks, because many of these older banks probably only exist because they have licenses. Um, but this, these ones tend to focus on the consumer interface. And again, they have marketplace and they also, there's a reasonably solid activity called defining APIs. APIs, application interfaces, are how you allow different people to join together in a smooth fashion. So you can have a fraud detection from one company linked to a payment from another company. Here is a general plot of the global neobank size. Uh, we see that the increase per year is around 20% on almost everything, value, users, and accounts. Um, here we have, um, what do we have here? We have. Um, this one here is accounts. This one here is users. And this one here is value. So they're all increasing at roughly the same rate. And if you look at the number of users, which is one we can relate to, that's 98 million, which is a non trivial number of users. You'll find that mainly in Asia where there wasn't an established infrastructure of existing banks. And so the neo banks had a much easier way to, to grow. Uh, here we have the, so here we have this, the number, the fraction of consumers in a given country with a neo bank. So here we have China, 93%, India, 50%, Brazil, 32%. And then we have this, the boring old existing world. Uh, from the US to the UK, et cetera, they're just a few percent. Uh, and now we come to a sort of region survey of just, uh, we, we've seen, let's say, some of these companies already under the FinTech. I remember N26, it's a European FinTech. Um, actually, these were launched in 2015. And these in 2017 and 2018. So there was still some life in this market uh, only a couple of years ago. These all have banking licenses. Maybe it's easier to get in Europe. Europe, uh, Europe maybe is not so much uh, controlled. Um, and uh, here's some comments either on users, three and a half million for N26. Uh, Penta serves small and Medium-sized businesses, 10,000 of them. This Bnext has 30, 300,000 users, as does Bunk. And they have different ge geographic penetrations. Either uh, here we have a Spanish language one, Germany and Italy, Germany, Netherlands and Italy. And here we have a broader range from Germany, United Kingdom, US, and several other European and South American countries. And they have various features. You will see these are not AI features. That's what I said. One sad thing about this field, even though they all claim that AI is the heart of everything, uh, these features don't look to me like AI. 
um, cash flow projection. Well, maybe you could use AI for cash flow projection. You can use it. To, you can use an LSTM to model spending as a function of time. But here, it's not like a 10 minute account opening doesn't require. Well, it might require AI to do an intelligent, quick evaluation of your credit rating. So maybe I'm wrong. There is some AI here. And but lock and unlocking of cards is hardly uh, super, super sophisticated. So there's a lot of straightforward, good technology. And that's why I say it's the spark of Duke Bob, which is really doing well here. Here's the US. Chime, which uh, is five million accounts. Um, Dave, Movan, first Dave has four million users. Uh, usually a user has two accounts we saw from a previous chart. So that's uh, two million accounts. Here they don't, uh, here we have, this is an old one, which is more a technology company. It has uh, ways to persuade users to save. And it takes this technology and uh, Allows you to to endorse it and put your name on it. Um, you know, here we have a feature of Vera. Well, it's not an AI. It's a good, better interest than normal on your savings account and overdraft coverage. Um, well, those are these were liked by consumers, but they're just a mess. That's why I said a lot of this money they're getting is not actually going to buying software engineers to do nifty things is actually going to buy customers. And they do that by offering them very good deals. Here we have a 2% interest, early wage access, overdraft protection. So all of these get their users by offering particularly good deals. UK similar, um, 3 million users, 1 million users, half a million users. Um, and they have a scope which is often includes the US, sometimes Europe, and it's, it's a, but um, sometimes maybe probably don't see anyone which is US and Europe. Um, but anyway, they have um, a scope. They had here one that started, I think, in the UK and moved to the Europe. And um, again, if you look at their features, you know, saving pots, split saving money from spending money. And so it has ways to assign your money to particular retailers. And they have deals on overseas money, overseas funds, which usually get charged a little significant uh, overhead in the US. So uh, dual currency, debit card, automatic account aggregation, cash back credit card. Um, well, here is actually a company which is a technology company, a decision making company, technology, AI, data analytics, and so on. So there is, AI is around here, but a lot of these features are just uh, nifty ways of um, persuading users to use your technology. Uh, here we have a set of um, neobanks focusing on small and Medium-sized business, businesses, SMBs. Uh, here we have SMB only, and here we have consumer customers and SMB. And um, we gave you a full stack, and we have the non-licensed banks largely doing front end, although presumably they also can offer back end technology. And uh, these are that's sort of interesting how a lot of these fintechs are actually targeting parts of the market, but that's okay, because these markets are huge. And so you can make a huge amount of money from SMBs. Um, real estate is amazing, how much, how, how large it is. Because uh, it is the largest of, um, dollar market in total. And we have commercial, residential, listing and search services, investment, cloud financing, tech. Technology enhanced brokerage, online settlement, marketing, leasing, marketplaces, mortgage, events and alternative offices. Companies will sell you your home office. Data, value, data and valuation analytics, property management, energy management. Um, so these are agent tools for the real estate agent. Titles, uh, direct home buying, avoiding all those things, matching to agents. So you can see 
that there are actually a lot of um, components here. And although they, unfortunately these resources don't tell you where this is where the, the CB insights again, where the uh, AI is involved, but there's obviously search has a lot of AI in it. Uh, and uh, several of these areas have AI. So, here is a number pointing out here's the mortgage debt, 9 trillion. And here's just, it's about eight times as much as the next one student loan and auto loan. And credit card is even less than that. Um, and, uh, so there's a huge focus, I mean, there's the deservedly a huge focus on this. And here are some of the companies in the digital mortgage lending ecosystem. If you ever, well, maybe you lot haven't bought a house. I remember when I bought a house here, there's just tons of paperwork. Huge amount of paperwork, which you then have to find and you can't find. And there are, um, so making it all digital is a very good idea. And here we have Chase, Wells Fargo, Bank of America, SunTrust, TD Bank, US Bank, LA Bank, I don't actually know that bank. They're all launching digital mortgage starting around the beginning of 2018. And here we have the number of um, insure techs founded per year. And you can see it really soared 2013 to 2016, and now it's just going down to zero. This is, reflects all of FinTech. FinTech is now a mature area. It's probably got far too many companies in it already. Only a few will, well, I think only a few will survive. And um, there are the venture capital community is just not funding new ones. I assume if you came up with a great new idea, they would. Um, okay. Uh, here is uh, one particular company, New Bank, which is in South America, Brazil, and it's uh, actually been has an app which is downloaded more times than the major uh, European neo banks, and um, it's uh, grown a very strong app monthly active users. If you remember rightly at an earlier. Uh, slide, I found out how many customers there were for um, neobanks. And South America, uh, China, and India had a dominant fraction of users who wanted to use neobanks. Presumably telling you about the, um, uh, the, 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 they just don't have established big banks. Here's an interesting, I told you about the old days when I got my $2 million in 2000, and then the crash wiped me out. But here we have these people did start off with $2 million, and then they are now up to Series F, A, B, C, D, E, F, and F is just 400 million. So, and um, that values it at 10 billion, so that was 4% uh, of the, the company's value. And notice what they have, the no fee credit card. Well, I told you, they're giving good deals to customers. Um, and um, its app is obviously quite, oh, here's the download of apps for various near banks. Chime is the largest US one, and New Bank is obviously bigger than all the others. N26 was that large European one we focused on. And now to the final uh, comment, which is just a sort of rather ad hoc comment. I just stuck here about this uh, Argentinian um, bank BBVA. <coughs> and, <it's, coughs> and here the story says it's actually on AI. It's AI to, ha to actually manage the gathering of uh, customers. We know that AI is incredibly important in recommender engines. And so, you know, AI ought to be really good at getting customers in lots of different places. And they have, what's interesting, here we have a sort of a totally obscure bank in, in Argentina, and it has 830 data scientists and 140 AI experts. 
So this is giant. It just shows you how the huge amount of money in these fields is just sopping up people to do AI and big data. And here there's other things they're doing like biometric uh, digital uh, accounts and uh, leading mobile banking platform. And um, here is its sort of story of when it started uh, digital in 2015. And um, it had its app around a uh, year and a half later, e-commerce campaigns. Uh, and um, then it uh, was in the, it was sort of clearly had to maintain its position as a leading, a leading bank. So that's the end of this um, survey of, um, of uh, neobanks. Thank you.